All right, you are still watching Ways Now. Um, values are what matters most uh, um, to us. They motivate and guide us and are the, pa um, the passion in our hearts as to what and how we do things. World Values Day, celebrated on the 19th of October, is an annual campaign to increase the awareness and practice of values around the world. This year, the day's theme is Values Brings Us Together. So on this day, let us put out our values into action, reaching across the growing barriers that divides us to build a stronger country and a more united world. This is actually an interesting day to even have the conversation we're having because if we as a people had certain kinds of just basic values, values. and standards that we have placed for ourselves, there are some conversations that will not even make it to the headlines in Nigeria anymore. True. Right. Honestly. But let, you, let me hear your thoughts um, on values quickly. Uh, well, values and convictions, I'm a huge, I'm a huge fan of it because values well, gives you direction. You know, when you know that you value education, then that means that your attention is going to be pointed towards education. And I also think that um, when you, when you are, when you make yourself a very, a very valuable person that it gives you an edge in life such that people tend to look beyond your race, your complexion, yeah. your, your yeah. whatever it is. They just see that value because people will always magnet um, towards a valuable person. So, and whatever we call value. Yeah, you want to add yeah. to that? Yeah, um, I was reading this book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Oh, nice. And mm. in the book, <laughs> the writer alluded to people striving to act based on values as opposed to based on circumstances. Now in Nigeria, it's a very like fast paced and intense community. So it's, it's natural that you become a reactive person. Someone pushes you, you have to push them back. But then thinking and acting with values in mind gives you a new perspective to tackle that kind of situation. You, you think to yourself, what are the things that are actually considered to be important? in this scenario and then you act as such. Mm. So even if somebody does something that typically you should react to, you'll find yourself not reacting mm. or choosing a different course of or action. Or choosing to respond. I always respond to people. Like you can't catch you can't catch me. No. Mm. I respond because yeah. when you respond to people you're at a you are at a more advantageous position, position. because mm. now you're not reacting, right? Mm. Yeah. I think value also keeps you accountable. Mm. Really. Mm. Because, like Alpha rightly said, if you know who you are, I think everybody should actually know who you are. You know, come to this self awareness of who you really are. It guides you to, in your daily activities, even in life. Mm. Because, like he also rightly said, we are in a very intense community. I, I, like I always say, especially when you live in Lagos, it feels like <laughs> everything is just going fast. Before you can catch up with this, many more things have already happened. So mm -hmm. if you're not careful and if you don't have your value system intact, mm -hmm. you can just swerve and just yeah, do anything goes, how, anything goes you know, any opportunity, that, any door that you see that is open, you just go and without even it checking and all that. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Well, for me, I'm kind of at that phase where I'm learning to like not be reactive but be responsive because mm. I think it, there's other book by that Keith Harrell guy attitude is everything that's the current book yeah, yeah. and so I'm like Lord help me because <laughs> I drive out to do them like what is it oh yeah nah, road <laughs> rage. I'm telling you so I'm, I'm not ashamed to admit that I'm kind of in that place in my life where I'm trying to like strictly align with my values especially mm. about yeah. Being more responsive mm. and not react and less reactive. Absolutely. And yeah. that sometimes we even get tested, right? Mm. When you know, I feel like people think that they are strong until they are really tested. Mm. That's when you now know, are you really strong? Yeah. Or I had not? something. <laughs> sorry to cut you off. to say about that. So um, it's a very common thing, particularly for males around my age, to mm. work out. People go to gym, the gym a lot. Mm -hmm, yeah. And then like when you're in university, the first day on campus, everybody's in the gym. The mm -hmm. next day, the population has decreased by half. <laughs> so sometimes when I do my own personal workouts and then it's getting stressful, this thing pops in my head that I think I should like share. It's the reason that you are strong mm -hmm. is so that you can take those things that are coming your way. So oh, like when nice. the situation gets tough, that is actually, because you wouldn't know that Superman was Superman until Lex Luthor came exactly. with everyone and yeah. almost destroyed the world. That's how he got to reveal himself. Mm -hmm. So your strength is determined by the challenge that you're able to 
overcome mm-hmm. to some extent. Yeah, yeah. 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 Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Afo, you're coming yeah. on my podcast. Just, just be just put it out there. Ooh, on purr. <laughs> they, because, you know, I was just thinking, because I'm launching my podcast very soon. Let me just say it out there. And Afo, you're going to be my first guest. All right, so quickly, let's run through what we found in today's news. Then we'll come back to our conversation for today. All right. Who wants to go first? Who has theirs open? Uh, Sanzi? Well, yeah, okay, go ahead. so... Um, breaking news not exactly breaking news but it's been trending for a while mm. it's the developing news um popular nollywood actor john lukafo aka mr Ibu, has come out uh, i mean we saw images of him or video clips of him just calling out to nigerians and praying for assistance and prayers uh that he doesn't want his leg cut off and you know from the signs of it it looks like he's diabetic or mm. diabetes or something like that so um now this very upcoming social commentator very dark man comes out to say oh that um it's very embarrassing that somebody that a legend like john ibu should come out and be crying for this so he was saying that nollywood should find a way to take care of the the older actors like nkemo patients mm-hmm. um you know miss yeah, yeah, yeah because yeah because he even said that because when you go uh, and which is true mm-hmm. i went to gabon Mm-hmm. Like in Libreville, I was sh- stunned. Right, most of the actors in Hollywood that they know are m- more of the vet- veteran than or soft, yeah. And that was what you were saying that these guys are like celebrated heroes across other African countries. Well, well, here is the thing, right? Mm. I do have my reservations because Nollywood industry is because very so someone made a comment or someone you know called out on Very Dark Man and he said, <laughs> Nigeria never gets structure finished, and Hollywood will get structure, mm. you know, mm-hmm. and. Well, here is the thing. Nollywood doesn't have a structure where there is gratuity paid mm, yeah. to the, the, the actors or whether you're a veteran or you're an upcomer. Mm. So Nollywood is an industry that has been fashioned, at least as of right now, when it's like the seasons, you know, the story of Joseph, when there is food, save all you can because there will be feminine and in that feminine, mm. nobody will remember you. Mm-hmm. Do you know, and that's what we are missing in Nollywood. Eventually we are praying that we'll get to, because even in, in Hollywood, nobody pays you gratuity. What they do is royalties. Yeah. So we are praying and working towards Nollywood getting to that place where they pay royalties. But right now that is not functional. Mm-hmm. So you need your wisdom and financial advisors to tell you invest in this, invest in this because there will come a time they will always, when they will always be the drought. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you understand? Yeah. There will always be the drought. So there's a boom. Mm-hmm. He had a very good career. But then again, then again, mm-hmm. remember, really God will bless you. Because <laughs> if you remember that, it is even this new Nollywood people mm-hmm. that started getting, you know, better pay. Mm-hmm. So they were popular, but they were not really being paid well. Right? Mm-hmm. So I get you. I mean, he's gotten a lot of endorsements and all of those things. Mm-hmm. Right? And this is what we say to people. Save now. Jealous are because invest now, you know, mm-hmm. so that tomorrow, when the, when the, because it's not about if it comes, it will there will come. always will be a drought season. season. That is yeah. true. It will come. So when it comes, so that you have a buffer for it. Mm-hmm. I will just say that and we'll leave it there. Um, Danny, quickly. Okay, so my, well, what I found in the news today is um, the federal government of Nigeria on Thursday announced the closure of the um, Third Milan Bridge in Lagos starting from midnight Saturday, October 21st to midnight of Sunday, October 22nd to carry out repairs. Um, <laughs> so I find this very funny because it's not the first time that this bridge is being closed and then they just, they open the bridge again and it's like the same thing that was there before. Is what is there the now. Mm-hmm. So it's like, holes. what are you people now closing the bridge for? So and <laughs> let's say what Sazi said off camera. <laughs> <laughs> no, because for real, don't be you. I think it was your news on Monday or something. Mm-hmm. North Milan Bridge is now like a dead tra- trap. Like yeah. if you are not careful, especially at night, when so you are driving at night, you listen to literally like shine your eyes like this. Mm-hmm. It's nothing. Hey, hey. The so now that like deadly. It, as they are, I don't know, would it take them just one? one day or just two days to fix the entire street. No, what they are trying to do is window dress it. So they want to just patch it, which <sighs> is what they normally do. So that's do. a temporary solution to a mm. seemingly permanent problem at this point. Mm. So they need to like find a lasting solution to it as See, opposed I've to... seen some videos in case our minister for works and these, all the engineers inside that ministry, they never see. Just follow civil engineers on Instagram. Yeah. Or, I they follow them where? Mm. You see some kind of correct things that those people have. There's a sealant, dummy, that they will just inject it into the holes. It seals up and it is there permanently. Uh-huh. Like, 
technology has done it, it in a far. way that it is going yeah. far. Instead of all this mixing granite and stuff together, and that is not that is obviously not working. So, 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 so we just need to create a budget for it and ensure that this one don't need budget. If they want to make a then order from China, order now you go pay. It doesn't even it's just the thing. Now it's only it's only when the government wants to do it that it be expensive. If I wanted to order that thing. It will not be expensive. <laughs> but the truth is that even the government can carry this thing out themselves. They still have to allocate this thing. They should allocate it to me. Allocate. So I think it's carrying it out to the later that is the problem. Yeah. Having a budget is not the problem. Allocating it to a company is not even the problem. But we didn't even really they should look at See, let me tell you something. Yeah. The government should get to that point where they look away from making money from every project. That mm -hmm. is the only way we will have mm -hmm. permanent solutions. Because at, as it seems now, the same road, do you understand, mm -hmm. that they shut down for months. It's the same it's thing. Still, like, Come it's on. Ridiculous, actually. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. ridiculous. So my story is actually tied to, I mean, um, uh, what's it called? Humanity, for the, for the be lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. um, there's an area in Lagos State that is currently flooded. Um, it's the uh, residents around um, Owode, Oniri, in Koshofe local government area. They are actually using canoes, if you can see the videos. Mm -hmm. They're actually using canoes to go... To, so there was a, a um, the release of the Onya Onya I think dam yeah I pronounced it right last week right and this affected so that thing always happens you know every now and then it affected Unity Estate Jova Street uh, Elias and all those areas around that community in the Sherry Ol Olora and then Alag Al Alagbole residents of um, Lagos so please um, you remember we talked about um, on Tuesday we talked about structures planning and all of that yeah. so i need to understand why every time there's a release of a dam it floods the entire area is it that mm. the areas at this state they don't have enough drainage. you know because it's not a normal drainage that should have mm. they should have proper like nice. canals yeah. that would channel that water, water as it's coming so even if it would the water would come like Heavy, yeah. it, it will, to which can pass so for it to stay days like this. I mean, if they can scroll through the pictures, like literally, mm -hmm. they are using so now canoe business is there <laughs> because yeah. there are people using canoes <laughs> and mm -hmm. paint so that they can move. But so the honestly, canoe guys take them from mm -hmm. one point to yeah. the other. So mm -hmm. that whole area is, is flooded. So this canal issue, remember the video on 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 Instagram that people were calling out government, I, I be, don't be merciless, where yeah. you know tractor was taking down the buildings that were built on the canal. So just to step in for the government a little, sometimes it's not really government. Sometimes it's people who just deliberately either do stuff that blocks canals yeah. or they build on it. So just do all sorts of so that's why we need to Illegal investigate stuff. this area. Yeah. Yeah. Do you understand? Because I believe that if they investigate the area, because for every time mm -hmm. that this happens, so maybe the government might just need to relocate the entire people and reconstruct the entire community. Plan planning. Go. I have a question. Yeah. For I'm not really sure. For projects like this, when they initially build the dam, do they account for the surrounding area around the dam? Because what this looks like, this doesn't even look like any structure was even put in place in the, f mm. in the first place to account mm. for all of that. It, mm. it feels like it's undocumented because everywhere is flooded. Mm. Like there is no passageway for the water to even go out, let alone say it's blocked. So I feel like there is just, is them asking you, is there? So to, to, your, to your question, right, yeah. I would, my response would be from my little knowledge of what I know that happens around, I mean, that happens with these kinds of things, the dam was there. Right, the the, the 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 residents or the community came and met it. See, that's where the problem so, actually. Yeah. Happened. So somebody did not do proper diligence, due which diligence, is why they were demolishing. Yeah. So if they if they were coming to the community to start to build, mm -hmm. there should have been a proper structure right. that yeah. says you can't build here, you can't build here, you can't build here, because mm -hmm. this what you know this is this what is, you should expect. Yeah. Right. But you see, it is that planning that we lack. Mm -hmm. You know, it is that ability to sit down. And look at it from an eagle's eye um, view or whatever, view, yeah. aerial view, and say, okay, this if you if this water is released, this is what it will, ha will happen. So mm -hmm. you can't build here. Right. But sadly, if you even look at the people there, mm -hmm. these are makeshift homes. They're yeah, not even like, like thank you. They're not mm -hmm. even like proper proper structures. So that's what I'm saying. That they're not supposed, supposed to be. be. So that's why I'm even saying space, to you that yeah. if the government truly wants to solve that problem. It is a serious movement. Like they just need to relocate those people from that yeah. entire place and find a way to restructure it. Then, if they can yeah. still have houses there, then it will be properly planned. 
they will not be homeless mm. again and come and blame the government again. So it's really a full circle. No, you can't, you can't be homeless. So they will create like, uh, what do they call those camps now? I, yes, uh, they will IDP. create like a, a, a an IDP camp for them to like a holding area. Temporarily. Then what, by the time they now rebuild, they now re re what's it called? Um, move them back. To move them back. In, in English, is, <laughs> <laughs> English is not our mother tongue. Okay. <laughs> we shall take a break. When we come back from the break, we'll, we'll continue the conversation around education. Stay with us. <laughs> 